All right, y'all, welcome back to another one on Spirit of the Outdoors. Today, what I'm doing is I'm out looking at this plant that's called what we call beauty berry or a beauty bush. Um, the plan is that I'm going to harvest some of these leaves, pick some off. I need just a good handful of the leaves, and I'm going to make a insect repellent or basically a mosquito repellent. I've already made some. I'm out testing it today. I rubbed it on my skin before I left the house and I walked through an area that I came down and walked through earlier and the mosquitoes were terrible. I walked through there just a few minutes ago, no mosquitoes. And I have these scattered all around this property, but I walked back here to this edge of this. This is a cattle pasture. And what they done is they piled the brush and stuff where it was logged and they cleaned it up to make the pasture and left these big brush piles and it's decaying and it's good nutrient soil and these bushes are growing and the one good way to identify this bush this time of year now we're mid-july and uh well later july actually it's about july the 19th or so they'll start growing right now a purple flower right here but it'll start putting on a thick cluster of purple balls right here later on over into the end of august early september and you can harvest those balls and they make a good, uh, or berries they are, and they make a good jelly or jam. You'll find tons of U uh, YouTube videos on various people making jellies and jams out of those. And you can see behind me there's tons of other types of plants and species growing in here. But we're going to pick some of this and I'm going to show you how to make uh, a... Uh, insect repellent but now we're going to take a closer look and i'm going to pull my book out of my bag take this off and uh and read a little bit in my field guide about this plant okay this is a little bit closer look at that now i'm going to show you the book this is a peterson field guide it's medicinal plants and herbs But okay, in here what it says is American Beauty Bush, also known as French Mulberry. Shrub, three to six, leaves, ovate, oblong, toothed, woolly, beneath, tiny whitish blue flowers, and whirl-like signs. June, uh, June to August, rich blue violet berries in clusters and leaf axles. October to November, where found rich thickets north Maryland to Florida, North Arkansas to Oklahoma, occurring only in the southern part of our range to North Arkansas. Through Asia, species this genus are grown as ornamentals as far north as Boston, easily recognized by the sticky, aromatic opposite leaves and whorls of magenta fruits. Uses. American Indians use root and tea leaf and steam baths for rheumatism, fevers, and malaria. Root tea used for dysentery, stomach aches, root and berry tea used for colic, formerly used in the south for dropsy and as a blood purifier in skin disease. But what we're going to use it for today is we're going to make an insect repellent. You have to extract these oils out and I'll show you later. We're going to harvest this, take it home, and we'll get back with you as we dry it and I'll show you how we make this. Guys, I did want to point out one of the ways that you learn a lot of these plants and what I'm doing is taking you along with me as I learn some of these other species. This is something I'm doing that I've already practiced and figured out and know works. But I'm also looking at some other plants. I've took pictures of some plants. I've, I've got my camera with me. I also have my phone, but I've got my books. I find a plant that I'm not sure about. I look at it. I've cross-reference it with a guide. I research it on the internet, but those books out here in the field are way better than sitting at the house looking at something on the internet and then trying to look at a picture. If I've got that book in my hand and I'm reading what it says and I can pick this plant up and I can pick up one and I can look under it and I can say, yeah, it describes it like this and it smells like this. While I've got that book in my hand, it's, it's a lot better way of learning these plants. You can't just watch YouTube videos and learn about this stuff. You need to watch the YouTube videos, but you need to get you a field guide of some description 
and uh, and I drop a link to my stuff in my videos most all of my videos now there's links in the description of, of books whatever I'm using that you can go and find that product on Amazon but you need to get a field guide of some description come out into the into the wild get out in the in the edge of the woods and these pastures anywhere that's in your area that you're gonna be like if you're going camping or you're where you live or whatever and and learn those plants because there's a lot of plants right here under your feet I mean just in the area that I'm in there's honeysuckle there's there's all kind there's mint growing right here there's so many plants that I used to probably couldn't identify but from the practice of getting out here, bringing my backpack, a bottle of water, a book, maybe a tarp in case it rains, just to get out and track around. And another thing that I want to mention to you guys, you got to take it easy and watch for snakes. I, depending on where you live as to what species you are, most of the time snakes are going to take off and run from you if you're making racket walking through the woods. I don't try to be quiet unless I'm hunting game. I try to make racket. Uh, but now, when you're doing this, you've got to be careful because there's a good friend of ours, a guy that he tracks deer for a lot of people in this part of the country. Probably one of the best, has one of the best dogs for tracking down deer or shot deer to recover them. Got bit twice by a cottonmouth yesterday. Uh, I think I, the last I heard, they had he was in ICU and they'd give him 10 vials of antivenom. And this is an avid outdoorsman, a guy that's been tracked through, wears snake pants, all this kind of briar pants. I mean, protective gear. He's He knows what he's doing. He's done it for a living. And it can happen because you're out in the woods doing things. So be careful when you're out doing this. We have cottonmouth, we have rattlesnake, and we have copperhead is the most three prevalent. Now, we do have some coral snakes at times. I've never personally seen one. They are here. There's a few other snakes that have some venom but we call them poisonous snakes you know them as venomous snakes uh, it's like clip magazine it, it, I mean you know what somebody's talking about when they say a poisonous snake uh, just unless you one of those you know I don't know how to describe kind of people that want to you know oh it's not poisonous venomous we know what you're talking about you don't you can get over yourself uh, but you need to watch for those things out here in the wild uh, they could be anywhere. A lot of times, like especially in these brush piles, there's going to be pockets up in here where there's holes under those logs. That's where they're going to be. So I wouldn't go crawling up in the top of this after something. Um, I'm not afraid of snakes as long as I can see them, we're good. It's up in there where I can't see them, you can get bit. And I've got on leather boots. Most of the time, though, it's been raining for a few days. People's wearing rubber boots. They're useless against snake bites. I, I'm bad to go barefooted. I'm bad to wear my Crocs. Uh, but you need to watch where you step in. These leather boots offer a little bit of protection, but only so high. And even then, a snake can bite through them uh, if he hits just right. And if it's a glance and blow, it offers a little more protection than a rubber boot. But just some things to think about. But uh, we'll get this insect repellent made. Y'all hang with us. I've got some bone set that I picked yesterday while I was down there and I want to dry it. I'm going to show you how I have a solar powered dehydrator real quick and easy without no extra effort. This is one of them aluminum baking pans. Now I use this to put plants in within the little trays and uh, I just save junk. You know how I am. Prop them, hang them in there like that. I've got this window right here and I used this window here for a purpose. And what I did is I bent the tops of those stems over. And then take that stick, prop it up against there, boom. Let me get my plants out of this bag. I'm going to take you around and show you this solar powered, the other side of it. This is on the outside. You see how that's just been overhanging? Solar powered dehydrator, quick and easy. Take it apart, stash it, use it for something else. Okay, I've got a jar here. Right down here I've got a pot. It's got water in it. This is my outdoor pot. I've melted wax. I've, you've seen me do some other stuff in it. Uh, and I did rinse the outside of this. Got some sticky stuff, but it's 
I don't use this for food. I use it for these other processes. But now what you want to do is you want to rip these uh, leaves up. Now I don't know how much of this I'm going to put in there. I probably won't use every bit of it. I just brought back make sure I had enough. Uh, I don't want these big long stems in there. But you just want to break that up. Uh, you can dry this, and I've heard that it works better dried. I have not dried it and done it that way. I do know it works this way. Uh, you just break those leaves up, put them in there, and it depends on how much of this you want to use as to how much bug dope you want to make. But I'm just kind of massacrating this. You can take and grab handfuls and rip them up. It's not no... Uh, if we had a good knife we'd out here with us with a cutting board, we could just cut it all up in fine pieces. I'm going to build me an Alaskan Yulu. Yulu? How do you say that? Yulu? Yulu? You know what I'm talking about when them big half moon looking knives? I want one. But we're going to make one. Probably here pretty quick. That's probably enough for what we're going to do. I may dry the rest of this for some other purposes. Now, because I don't need an overly amount. I may put a little more in that. But before I add any more, I went and picked some mint as well. Get the pine straw out of there. This is the same mint plant that I've made tea out of. It just has a strong... And I'm probably going to plant these roots out here. That's why I pulled the roots up. Otherwise, I would have just cut them off. I'm looking. There's a bug on there. Not a bug, a worm. I know that don't zoom in. I'm going to throw him over there a little bit. Go about his merry little way. This just adds a bit of a fresh scent to this. Is why I'm putting it in there. I'm gonna throw them right down there. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna plant them to where I have some up here growing close to my house, and they will sprout. The roots will. In fact, I'm going to soak them in this water for a little bit. I have a bowl with some water. I'm going to lay them in that. Okay. Just for good berries, we're going to throw a few more plants in there. Now, I have heard people say to cover this with oil. You don't have to. It's going to cook that down in there. Because what we're doing is a double boiler method. Now, I'm using olive oil right here. This is just great value, classic olive oil. Yesterday I used used cooking oil, uh, like vegetable oil, is what I used uh, because that's what I had in a pinch. I was saving this to use in the video. We're going to put about half of this in there. Maybe not quite half. Okay, we'll turn our gas on. I have to turn it up to get it started. Now we're going to turn this down real low. And this will take, a, it'll probably cook, I'll come out here and stir it along. This will take about a couple of hours to do. So, now I, like I mentioned, I'm using olive oil. I think you can probably use any type of oil. It's possible that you could probably use water. The oil seems to extract in this double boiler method. I have not tried water. I may try that to experiment with it. But like I did, I used that I, all that I had fried fish in that I had discarded. 
and when I say discard it, I poured it into a jug to save. In fact, it's right here. This is used vegetable oil. And I had it saved to, uh, I use it to oil things, post, wood, something that I'm not, I just use it for different things. I've poured it around post on the ground. Uh, but you could probably render down animal fats. I have some oil over here. In this coffee can from where I fleshed animals and this is really liquidy uh, I'll show you if I can I don't know how much you can see right here but you can see how that pours out right there like that that is a good oil and what I did is these chunks of animal fat from where I fleshed animals during trapping season and I merely just laid them in this can and I set this bowl in there just to keep the bugs from getting in it and set it down over here and it's just from the heat and the humidity here in Mississippi it has rendered itself down but you could put it over a heat double boiler method or probably just over a fire you lose a little putting it directly over the fire it steams out I was gonna mention this if I if I could have located some I would have added pennyroyal to this uh, penny royal if you know Nesmuk used it with pine tar and something else I can't think of I think castor oil and made a bug dope I would have added the penny royal to this I do have pine tar that I could put in this but this right here works this is what I made yesterday I wore it down into the woods and mosquitoes didn't bother me so and I know the mosquitoes were out yesterday because, like I said earlier, I went down there before I applied it to see if they were, and they were swarming everywhere. So I know it works. The olive oil is going to just be a little cleaner than what the other. But after this cooks about two hours, you'll see how dark this oil turns. It'll cook those plants down in there. So I'm going to let this st uh, steam for a while. I'll check back with you. I'm going to add just a little bit more oil to this because I have a good amount of leaves in there and I want to wind up with about a half a bottle for the amount of bug dope that I'm making and yes my hands are nasty I've been sanding pottery no I will be shaking the camera I know but you can see how dark that's already turning. It's been about 30 minutes. We're going to let it continue to cook. Okay, this has been boiling probably about two hours. And I have added water to the side of this a time or two. Just to, because it boils out. I didn't put that in the camera. I'm going to leave my water boiling because I'm going to use that to clean my jar out. Pour that hot water into my jar. So I'm going to set this right up here, and I'm going to move the camera where you can see what we do in here. Well, I'm just going to use one glove because I need to be able to handle the jar. I'm going to pour it into this jar here to begin with, just so that you can see the color of it. Uh, and then I'm going to put it in this spray bottle, and I do not know that if it's going to work in that spray bottle. But, uh... I'm going to just kind of hold the leaves back. But you see how that has a real dark tint to it? It'll take a little while as any oil to drain all that oil down, strain it down. But I'll finish getting the rest of that with a strainer. But I wanted you to you can see the tint of this, how dark it is. I'm going to attempt now to pour it into this and like I said I do not know this jar is probably not that hot no 
I can handle it. It's warm, obviously. But I'm going, you have to hold that funnel up where the air can come out around here. Don't just sit it down airtight. But if it don't work in this spray bottle, it's easy enough to keep it in any type of a small jar. Now this fill this bottle up to about right here. And this is just some, I don't know, some kind of squirt bottle. Probably had some hair product in it, but it's been cleaned out. Now with it warm, it should definitely work. Yes. Now it squirts in kind of a, but what I do is rub it in my hands. You can rub it into your skin. So... don't really have a mint smell per se but I'm going to see if I can get the rest of this into this bottle here got a good bit of it. I'm going to dump the rest of this out, out here. And I'm going to take, I'm going to cut my bottle off here. And this hot boiling water. Well. And this has been pine tarred. It won't hurt for that to get Wet. I can wipe that off easy enough and it's got some cracks in it so that if it does get wet the water can drain off but that will clean that jar pretty good might ought to get a glove for that that's a little warmer than I like <laughs> And to clean that, I just kind of, and it's fixing to start raining, I think, out here. They're giving out rain for later this evening. If I need to clean it any further, this is the outside jar. I do whatever with it out here, mixing up stuff. I've got some other plant, like you see this other beauty bush that's laying here in this window. I've got another project that I'm doing some experimenting. Now, what I do... When I'm doing something like this, before I come tell you guys, hey, try this, it works, I'm experimenting with it off camera. I've done made one batch of this that I'm using that I'll probably give to somebody or put up. It'll wind up getting used and test it and make sure it works because I'm not, I'm not there's no point in me doing this, filming this whole video and then figuring out, how oh, that didn't really work. I done checked it out and seen, so I've got another project that I'm doing with this beauty bush. But thank you guys for watching my videos. Uh, glad y'all, maybe this will help some of you. And I know you're thinking, well, I can go buy a can of bug spray for about $3.50 at Walmart. And you can. But this is just good information to have because I feel like at some point in time that we're going to be where we can't just go buy whatever we need. Uh, this is stuff you just, it's good to have this information in the back of your mind. And again, it's just a, an, an experiment to do, maybe with your kids or whatever. Now you're saying, yeah, I can, I got to go buy the oil, so I might as well buy the, the uh, beauty bush. But I do believe that you can render animal fats, uh, other oils from plants. Uh, and I'm not sure that this wouldn't work in water. Uh, I'm probably going to experiment with that and see. Uh, and if it works, I may come back do another video and let you know, hey, this did work with water, but I'll test it and I'll go to the swamp and see if the mosquitoes bother me with it before we do that. But it's just information that's good to have to know that, hey, this does work. Uh, you're probably better off to go buy you a can of spray with DEET in it. The next thing is, is, is DEET's probably not really good for your skin, for you people that are organic, that you want to be 100% organic, this is the way to go. Uh, 
and you can use all organic materials to do this. So just good, good information to have. But thank you guys for watching my videos. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.